Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Happy new comic preview day. That is what we're doing right here, right now. Telling you about some of the new stuff that's come out. And also you can buy it if you want. The things we show off here are still available in limited quantities. So if there's anything that's not on your pull list this week, just let us know in the comments and we can hook you up. Yep, While so, supplies last. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so we are in Fandy Flux, a comic book store in Chattanooga, Tennessee. For those of you who aren't local, we took a break today and each of us read a few of the comics and we're going to give some spoiler free previews. Then we're going to show off some of the other really hot covers and hot issues that are out this week. So uh, I think I'm going to dive in and go first. Uh, I read Wrath of Web of Venom Wraith. Wraith. Yes. Not Wrath. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it backwards on the TV screen. But I read Web of Venom Wraith. Uh, which was an amazing issue. So Wraith, uh, he's a character from 10 years back, and they're, they're kind of getting back to him. He's been in not many things, really, uh, up until now. But Donny Cates, uh, he's the sort of writer, he draws people back from mm -hmm. that time. Um, so without spoiling it all, uh, Wraith finds out some more about his history, which his history, of course, um, is interlinked with the, uh, the symbiote's history in general. Uh, there is a, a conflict with Null. I mean, that's been completely <laughs> promised. I, I think if that didn't happen... We'd say a heated really, argument. A bit more than <laughs> a heated argument occurs in this. Um, but some really cool things happen that I will try to allude to without ruining. Um, Wraith finds out one very important bit of information that I would say is the most important information Donny Cates has revealed since revealing the existence of Null. Mm. You know, because poor Donny Cates, it was just all the symbiotes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, nobody had heard of this Null character, and now he's sort of giving them this overarching theology. Well, if Null, you know, is uh, a big character in this theology, uh, another one has been mentioned. I'm not necessarily saying a first appearance. Uh, they might be able to count something as a first cameo, but a uh, big deal in that way. Uh, and don't think they forgot about Eddie Brock. Uh, there's a little something with Eddie in this too. <laughs> so that is my spoiler-free preview of definitely the best, most exciting book I read uh, so far this week. Show them the variants. Yes, the variants. And while you show that, do you need to know anything Blair. about Wraith? going into this or do they explain who he is they have one of those openers at the beginning that kind of tells you in just like you know a paragraph and a half here's this character here's what he's done and these covers are just great too mm -hmm. like they're just knocking it out of the park picking just the right artist for these um so it catches you up okay and once again guys if you're just now joining us if there's anything that you see here that you want it's all all this stuff, uh, we'll let you know if it's not cover price, but it's cover price. Uh, if you have a pull list with us, if you don't, we can help you set one up. And yeah, just comment and let us know what you want. Cool. So, I got a chance to read Rise of Ultraman. Who, uh, it's a Marvel comic, but he is not your traditional Marvel character. He is, uh, this is a... A retelling of the origin of this very famous uh, Japanese hero um, from the 60s that had a live action show and everything. Uh, and now we are uh, getting uh, this introductory comic for uh, those of us who have never read anything with him or seen the show, which didn't quite make it here uh, heavily back then, not like Power Rangers did or anything. Mm -hmm. um, this one is by uh, Kyle Higgins, and it is a very good introductory to a character that I knew next to nothing about. I had seen this character before, his helmet, but I didn't know what his powers were. I didn't know what his origin was. Um, and I'd say this one definitely, it brings you the origin in a very... Um, it doesn't just happen in two pages. Like, this is a very... You can tell this is going to be built on... Um, like, we need to get this, you know what's going on right here, because it's going to keep expanding. Um, we're not just going to throw you into the deep end type thing. And I really liked it. The art was really good. Um, it's a little bit bigger of an issue, and it does have some other stories in it. Hmm. Um, uh, one kind of ongoing funny story. Um, 
about uh, a kaiju teaching you lessons about how to do other kaiju and uh r really interesting but uh looks like the start of a really cool thing now that marvel has the license to do this because i know at the end they kind of did a thing that i believe thor or one of those series did before but it's a two-page spread and there's a whole bunch of stuff and it's like coming up in ultraman this season basically and it shows you all these characters and conflicts and everything that's going to be going on so i think it's a start of a really cool okay so question thing. power set so i i think i saw some ultraman when i was a kid like some bootleg yeah, thing because yeah. yeah my friends were into just the real early manga vampire hunter d all that yeah. uh is you know and of course he's not manga but he's from japan yeah uh does he get big is that is that one of his power set things so i'll say in this first issue you don't see a whole lot of him okay. uh i've still yet to completely understand how he works um he's almost like a green lantern ring that maybe finds a host uh but the little bit we do see of him he is giant okay he's an ultra man it's yeah like, he's whatever not... a normal man is it's ultra all the rest Ultra of us type. are just lesser man. Yeah. <laughs> the ultra man. All right, well. But it has variant covers. Variants, right? So, we have the Scotty Young variant cover with just a real cute monster on that one. We it's have... a Muppet monster. <laughs> it is a Muppet monster. A cartoon Muppet. We have the uh, John Tyler Christopher action figure variant really cool then we have this one which i think is really neat because it kind of cements the uh the new place that ultraman has at marvel with spider-man's yeah, shoulder. shoulder that's cool and then we have i believe we only have one of these yes uh -huh. okay this is the we only have one available one available so act fast the rise of ultraman one in 25 this one is sixteen dollars. It's really cool. Ultraman fighting a giant monster. It's cool. So Megan, what did you take a gander at with your peepers? <laughs> a few things this week. So I read Bill and Ted, and this is Bill and Ted are doomed. And it's got a really cool cover featuring all the characters, and all these characters are in there. So you have Dead, you have the station creatures you have bill and ted you have their wives the princesses and you have their daughters so if you guys got to check out the movie recently this takes place in between the time of uh so what's the last bill and ted movie it's bill and ted go to hg -E double hockey yeah. hockey sticks <laughs> um and uh the new movie so the da the daughters in this are very young Whereas in the movie, the most recent movie, spoilers, um, their daughters are fully grown, almost adults. So they're kids in this. You don't get to see Station as see much either, though. Like, he's in the comic. Right, but uh, not in the movie. No, yeah. not in the new one. So. But yeah, there's, there is a whole lot of all the characters that you love in this. And uh, Bill and Ted are trying to figure out that song that's going to bring the universe to perfect harmony. So it's a lot of stuff you know and love. I thought the writing was uh, true to the movies. And yeah, it's it looks like it's gonna be good. So there you go. Any variants on it? There is a variant. I left them over there because both of our cam the variants came in lightly lightly damaged. <laughs> uh, but there is one variant. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's bogus. <laughs> it is. It's not excellent, dudes. <laughs> um, so the other one I read this week is Empire Fallout Fantastic Four. So Empire is over, and now they're doing uh, a series of two one-shots that both re re uh, released this week, um, and you, you, you have the other one, mm -hmm. uh, where they are sort of showing, okay, well, what did this event, what, what are the lasting effects on the event? So I read it. Um, they claimed that two very, two mer very major important things were going to happen this issue, uh, and I will say two things did happen. Uh, as far as importance level, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 is at a 5, Particularly if, you, particularly if you're a Fantastic Four fan. Mm -hmm. If you're a Fantastic Four fan, it's more like a seven or eight. The other thing, it depends. It's a cosmic shifting of power. Uh, a character has returned that we haven't seen for a long time. Uh, they look pretty angry. Uh, <laughs> it might 
either be somebody who was good or maybe neutral before turning evil, uh, but I could see it having some big repercussions. Mm -hmm. uh, past that, it was just a cool little issue to read, especially if you've read the Empire stuff, because they left a lot of threads dangling. And if you read the issue, you're going to see what I mean. Like, there's a couple, uh, two people in particular that it's like, what, what's going to happen to them? What is, what is their fate? And they're not getting brushed aside. Mm. Um, so that's what I'll say about it. It has a few variant covers. So that's Alan Davis. And this one. But the main awesomest one I wanted to show off. Oh, yeah, the this beginning. This is the first of the Alex Ross Timeless Variants. I mean, look at that. Just, you know, the stark white backgrounds makes his art pop all the more. Um, so here is your chance to start collecting those. There's going to be 32 of them. Uh, it's the first one. We did order some extra. We have a lot of people collecting the full sets, but we knew some people would be a little bit behind. That's all right. We got you covered. Just let us know. Yeah. Um, because I, every time there's an amazing set like this, about 12 in, somebody's like, hey, I just started collecting them. Can I have the first 12? Mm -hmm. And it's been you know, three months, uh, yeah. and we no longer have them. So we're, we're trying to reach out to everyone. This Alex Ross set, it's 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 big. So there's your chance. Uh, Andy, you want to tell them about the other one? Yeah, so uh, since this Empire event was a big Fantastic Four and Avengers, uh, Avengers has Empire Avengers Aftermath. And as you can see on the cover, there was... Uh, Shockingly revealed and just a very passing thing that uh, Wiccan and Hulkling got married somewhere between off the off screen yeah. between the pages. <laughs> off screen. Um, and this kind of takes you back to that uh, moment where you actually see the wedding, you see kind of when it happened. Um, so I'll talk to what, uh, if you read Empire, you know. Um, there was something up with Hulkling the whole time. Mm. Uh, this explores more of what happened there and maybe some uh, repercussions for that. And then I thought it was very interesting, the last couple of pages deal with uh, a time jump to the future to a point in time we do not know. And uh, it looks real bad. There's some, uh, there's some heroes looking dead on the ground, and there's some fire in the sky, and uh, there is a character standing over them, uh, basically laughing maniacally or saying, I got you, or whatever. So I feel like that's kind of a big takeaway from that, is there is something going on at the end of that that you might want to It's Thanos see. with the Infinity Hammer. No. no I, I didn't read this. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't but it... it. I don't... <laughs> but the scene is it reminiscent. For, it worked for Thor. Yeah. It just goes around to the, all the books with the hammers like, I got you! Uh, and then we got this great variant cover, uh, as you can tell from uh, the after party of the wedding where Spider-Man is dancing with She-Hulk. And if you can see it, there is uh, Captain America butt bumping with America <laughs> Chavez. I love his facial expression. <laughs> so that's uh, the Terry Dodson cover that's really great. Okay, guys. New for me this week is the Ice Cream Man Quarantine Special. What the heck is this, you are wondering? It is very creepy and disturbing. Well, Ice Cream Man is a horror anthology. It's been out for a couple years now. And this issue is uh, an oversized featuring six mini comics that were published during quarantine. So Maxwell Prince, the creator of this, uh, he is so constantly creating uh, stories for this book that he po published things online. So those issues that were published online are collected in this volume. So if you are on Ice Cream Man, we put it in your pull box already. But if you have been wanting to check out this series, I'm, it's, it's definitely adult. It has a lot of psychological horror to it. There's actually very little gore, but it is, you know, it's, it's got themes of like aging, of, uh, you know, it just does a lot with very real the scariest or, of things, aging. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking of one issue in particular. But anyway, it's a it's it's a good series. I haven't fully read this yet, but that is what this is. In case you're curious, we have a few 
you left. And if you need a keepsake from this quarantine time we've been under, what better than a, the first comic I think I've seen yeah. with a masked figure on it? I know, I think he was not a superhero. This might be the first <laughs> yeah, that I've actually seen. It's got some special guests in there, too. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to steal it back to Empire Fallout because I got a couple incentive books. Uh, they're a little pricey, but still we're going to show them off. So, we have, this is the 1 in 100 sketch variant of the Alex Ross Timeless cover. So for every hundred of the Fantastic Four Empire Fallout we bought, we got one of these, which means we got exactly one of these. It is in pristine <laughs> condition. We are selling it for $120. That is what it is going for online. So we just want everybody on the show to get to see. If you don't have that capital, that's okay. We'll find somebody that does. Uh, very rare. And then uh, for uh, Empire Avengers, there is this one per store variant. It was a surprise one. We didn't yeah. know we were going to get this. Marvel sent it. We're selling it for $60. I didn't see any major flaws with it. I'd say it's, uh, you know, probably 9 6 or better. Um, but it looks like it's all the timeless variants all together. It's a wraparound. Almost like it's like uh, the full picture of all of them. Mm -hmm. So we only have one of these. Sixty dollars for that. That'd um, be cool if you're getting all of the Alex Ross timeless variants to get that one to kind of cap it off. Mm -hmm. The last one I'm going to show off. Um, I didn't write down what it was. It is uh, something to the children number ten, the one in twenty five ward variant. This one is hot. These have all been very hot. Um, we only have one. We are selling it for seventy dollars. Uh, these have been highly sought after. Um, so let me put my little notation on. I do this just in case somebody tunes in a little late as I'm showing it off. Don't want them to think it is uh, cover price because we had to purchase a lot of these to get it, and that is the fair asking price right now. Just checked right before the show. So those are some of the sounds I wanted to show. All right. Back to the books. We've got Captain Marvel number 21. I feel like a ton of people have picked up Captain Marvel yeah. since Empire started. She is such a big part of it, becoming uh, an accuser. Yeah. And so we do have that casket on the cover. I did. Uh, I didn't get to read it fully, but I did kind of skim through it to see exactly what happened. Um, there is a... Uh, a visit to a graveyard, but I would say the more important thing is um, what happens with uh, Captain Marvel's sister, or half-sister, half -sister, that we've just met a few issues ago. Um, you kind of find out where she's going to be going after um, this issue ends. Mm -hmm. So if you've enjoyed Captain Marvel or the Empire stuff, I feel like this is uh, continues to be a key plot in that big story finishing up in this one yeah i have i haven't gotten to read that i'm looking forward to it because i also figure that since this is the end of empire it might be the breaking up of the, her little team of accusers she pulled mm. together and i just i just wanted to see them say goodbye because it was such a, yeah. a neat little team they put together uh there were a few variants we have the bachalo variant pretty cool and of course the amazing yeah. Uh, frizzin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a couple newbies that came out this week and then some reprints. So, guys, I don't know a lot about video games, but, except Pac Man, um, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 Trauma Team is out today, but I want to talk about this because I've seen this comic been advertised everywhere, including the game. So they're doing a lot to promote for this, and I think that's really cool. Uh, a lot of people signed up for this on pre-order, so we do still have some available. Cyberpunk 2077 Trauma Team. Written by Cullen Bunn. Yep. Yeah, and Cullen so Bunn is I a fantastic everything writer. Okay, some other stuff that came out this week. Something is Killing the Children, number 10. It's about time to start your horror reading as it is turns October. Uh, we can catch you up on the trade paperbacks and some of the most recent we may have 
so but number 10 is out today that is the regular that. price cover yeah as opposed <laughs> to the one in 25 yeah. 70 dollars i'll let right you show there. that off alongside it later i have some reprints as well so these are all still available cover price this is the third printing of strange academy number two if you somehow missed out on seven secrets this is the da, 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 third, third print of number one we have Star Wars Bounty Hunters, number one, also third print. That, that, that second print cover was great, so they just kind of... Yeah, they're just adding bits of colors, colors to yeah. it. I have very few of this left, but this is Thor number four, the third printing. All right, so lots of different printings out there this week. Let me know if you need any of them while I still have them. There you go. Okay, is, is that all our stuff? You have like one. Oh, you should. No, right, I showed all mine together. Okay, yeah. okay, I missed it. Uh -huh. All right, so no, that's not all the stuff. Okay, so guys, it was Labor Day this yesterday, and I hope you had a really good one. But that also means that mail is delayed sometimes. That's right. Where, where's the DC? There's no DC here right Wait, now. I didn't hear myself say Batman. Shut <laughs> so, Or Joker. Or Joker. Death War. Metal. Um, it was supposed to arrive. FedEx, we just got the update that they are not delivering to us today. Watch it be different when I check again. But it's supposed to be here tomorrow. Anyway, if you want any of this stuff, here's what we know we're going to have. We're going to have Death Metal Trinity Crisis. Um, we're going to have Nightwing 74, which is a Joker War tie-in. So let me know if you want any of these. We'll pull it for you as soon as they get here tomorrow. And we'll have the variant on the Nightwing 74 mm -hmm. as well. That's the variant. So Superman 25, this is the first debut appearance the first full appearance according to key collector we'll see of sinmar it's on the cover and everything and then he's a new he's a new villain who's mm -hmm. supposed to be able to stand up to superman so yeah. high, high powered villain and then lastly we will have wonder woman number 62 762 is that a number or... yes <laughs> seven, seven these legacy numberings 762 this is the liar liar debut you're making fun of my handwriting because i i gave <laughs> I her the note bit. okay <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a liar, liar debut. Wonder Woman has gotten really popular again lately with the new team, new creative team on it. So it also has a Middleton variant. Yeah, that Middleton variant is nice. I wish so, we had it here to show off right now. I don't have these to show you right now, but once again, Death Metal Trinity Crisis, Nightwing 74, Joker War Time Plus variant, Superman 25, Wonder Woman 762. Okay. Yeah, those are the hot ones, hopefully. And we'll get them in tomorrow. We'll get them out as soon as possible. But we are still taking pre-orders. We just wanted to tell you sort of the, the hottest four because mm -hmm. uh, there's other DC that's coming out as well. Yeah. So, all, all right. right, guys. Well, we did it. Happy reading. Went through all the comics yeah. that we read again and <laughs> available for sale. Um, let's talk about our other shows. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> it, for those of you who maybe haven't seen our show before this is our little preview show where we preview comics we've read we also do a show every friday and i can't emphasize how much we would love for you to watch it we say it's the show for smart people because it is our pre-order show this is a monocle it is called comics from the future we go over comics the moment they release all the covers where you can still order as many of them as you want like you know if let's say you wanted uh five copies of that venom Right? Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you, you could have done it. We talked about it on that show three weeks ago. We tell you, here are the ones we think are going to be hot. Um, more and more people are watching that show, and it, it's great for us. We get more pre-orders. It's good for you. It ensures that you get these books. Uh, so check that out. It's every Friday at 5.30. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. It it's used been to be. It day, used to guys. be at one o'clock. Yeah, we're gonna at five thirty. Every on Friday at five thirty, we release it on Facebook Live, and right after we upload the video to YouTube. So, um, like our videos, subscribe. And we will keep letting you know what what's gonna be the hot stuff. Keep mm -hmm. keep you up to date. Yeah. Thank we you. know it, and we will pass our knowledge on to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for all of your support. Um, as Jason said earlier, we are a small local shop, so every bit that you buy from us really adds up, and we really greatly appreciate it, and we will try our best to make sure you get everything you need. If you don't live in Chattanooga, don't worry. We ship all over the U.S. Um, just message us any which way. We will set you up an account, and we will take care of you. We'll make sure you get the things that you want mm -hmm. for the personal touch. <laughs> I will personally touch your comments. All right. Uh, have
have a great rest of the week and send us a message if you need anything and we will see you next time. So I, I can't ever see any of the